Jesus Christ. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Real Life Podcast. Game a away. member of the Nathan Network of Podcasts and delivered by DoorDash. Ooh, Welcome to real life, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on right now? I think that I'm in love with Matthew Kachuk. Are you guys all drunk? Real Life Podcast, episode 397. Could you turn me up in my headphones, Liam? I can turn you all up. I don't know what's don't going on. Don't turn me up. I was deafened earlier. Yeah. Tyler's on vacation. Oh, so loud. Why? Why? So turn me we're down. we're left to our own devices. Ah, owie. That's how the one new junior talks. He says Abs- owie for everything. Well, I get it. Not, it doesn't mean I'm hurt. It means I'm upset with you, peasant. Well. Owie. I get it. I take him literally. I'm like, oh my God, are you injured, son? Just his feelings. No, no. He doesn't have feelings to get hurt. He's just taking notes. He's going to get revenge with everybody. The man he can talk. I respect that. He's going to tell everyone off. I respect that. Just like the HGA group. They're here to make your business better. They're here to tell you off. If you need it. If you need it. Uh, I was looking through TMZ for stuff to talk about because all I have prepped for today's podcast is Oilers signed Matthias Yanmark and Andre Sikera retired. What do I see? Elon Musk is very pale. He's on a boat somewhere, on a, on a yacht, a little vacay. He's also looking thick, Monye. Hey! He looks successful. When you're the richest man in the world, what the hell do you care? In this one photo, he's even got a, a man hosing him down. Really? Well, That's a to get nice the salt touch. Water off. That's a nice touch. May as well. When in Rome. Yep. He might be in Rome. Maybe. When I you got 220 in the kitty, you can just hire a guy to walk around and hose you down. Oh, now they're making fun of him for making fun of Bill Gates for being fat? Yeah, so TMZ has got yeah. uh, Elon mm. took a shot at Bill Gates for having a little, uh, little punch on him. <laughs> well... These days, Elon is rocking the same punch. Everyone who's old is fat at a certain point. Unless you're like a heroin addict. If you look at like Mick Jagger and them, they're not skinny chic because they're hitting the gym. They're hitting the well needle. I'm assuming 70 some year old Mick Jagger goes down to the gym every morning. Mm-hmm. You know how I Keith Richards it. fingers are all like me. Oh yeah, yeah. There. I heard that that's not from arthritis. I legitimately heard he had gambling debts he didn't pay, and the mob <laughs> broke his fingers once. I, I mean, why aren't you paying your bills, Keith? You got because you're fucked up, man. You got like <laughs> bandanas on at Tuesday morning at nine a.m. and shit. You don't not here to pay debts. You're here to be awesome. I would like to commit to a look like that. I think. I read the Keith Richards book. Do you ever read that? I have it. I just haven't read it. It's a thick one. Well, that's what she said, but yeah. it's a good book. He does some pretty fucked up shit. And I am pretty sure people had to tell him about it because I don't think you do this shit and then like sit down in old age and fondly remember. Yeah, there's no way he remembers all that shit. When World War Two ended, they made special edition Bentleys on tank chassis that they didn't need for the war. And he ordered one of these tank Bentleys and drove around in it <laughs> and would bounce off shit fucked up all the time. Right. And bang, bong, driving down the British streets. One day. I think he gets into a fight with his wife or girlfriend, jumps in the Bentley and drives to Marrakesh from London, Mm -hmm. Mm. gets to Marrakesh, turns doing God knows what, and then comes to his (laughs) senses. He says like days or weeks later, and he's like, oh, I better go back home, goes outside, (laughs) and the Bentley's been stripped to its frame like stripped completely to its frame, but the frame remains. He shipped it back to Bentley. Bentley built him a new one, shipped it back to Marrakesh. (laughs) Then he drove home. It was like more weeks later. (laughs) Time was different in those days. You just, you could measure things out in weeks. Like I haven't heard from him in weeks. Yeah. He's been gone for weeks. How long is my tank car going to take? We haven't seen him in weeks. Presidents used to just fuck off for months on end while active as president. They're like, I'm going to the woods for weeks. Now they got to be on Twitter. Tween now channel. 15 mm-hmm. minutes. If you don't text someone back, they do an Amber alert. Yeah. I'm doing a thing where I shut my phone off at certain hours now because Good man. I don't get text. Good. I also, I found out on your iPhone, you can turn off, just turn straight off, turn off alerts until certain times. Yeah. You I might do that in the morning. Turn your alerts off period. Too. People text me way too early. Sometimes it's because of time zones. I find. Yeah. I got people who are like, well, it's nine o'clock here in the middle of the ocean on an unmanned oil rig off the fucking Eastern seaboard of a Nova Scotia. Yeah. I don't want that. I'm out on that too. I texted you at eight o'clock the other day. Was that too early? No, yeah. that's fine. What? <laughs> I'd say so. Wouldn't you? Well, I was enjoying my coffee outside. I had my phone with me. I was making a meme for oodle noodle. You see? Ooh. Oh yeah. We the memes that. don't sleep. Never. <laughs> no. I had a great meme. We spoke about this and I'm just still upset about it. What happened? You should be. Well, I had this meme and it was, I'll show you after. Yeah. But I needed Connor Brown to be acquired by the Oilers. Oh, complete no. the meme. Yeah. And then they didn't get him. Mm-hmm. So just I retired after that, after that one actually. I, I think in memes now. 
like when they picked up old Jack Campbell and the cats, yeah. my brain was just like beautiful mind shit, like numbers whizzing by and shit. Cause I could see all the memes coming. Well, and with a nickname like soup, come on. These things don't write themselves though. Well, sometimes they do. It feels like they Unless say that Toronto, they just didn't accept the challenge. Mm-hmm. There was only like a thousand meme Lords in the world responsible for like 85% of the memes on the internet. Yeah, I believe it. Have you done the new Instagram update yet? Speaking of meme lords. Now it's just like video at full volume. I didn't realize I didn't want. Yeah. It's just all the things that I wanted from Instagram. No content from any people I follow. Just memes that are old or advertisements. Advertisements, a bunch of shit I don't follow. It's exactly what I want from my Instagram. It's the loudness of the video. I noticed though that like some of the accounts I run, like Edmonton River Valley, it's likes are through the floor and it's reaches through the floor because I'm not doing video. Well, there's that. I don't want to do fucking reels, Instagram. Jesus. Well, yeah. And if you just post photos now, they just don't get prioritized. Like, what is that? What the fuck another- have I spent my life? Exactly. God. Wasn't that the point of Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. You never used to be able to post videos. Yeah. And now you just, just can't pictures post of my, pictures. yeah, it's just because they're trying to be TikTok. Tendies. They are trying to be TikTok. It looks very similar. Let to TikTok. TikTok be TikTok. You be Instagram. Well, and nobody wants a shittier TikTok. Ugh. No. How the fuck am I supposed to take reels of the river Valley? I don't even understand how this is going to work. I don't understand how it works either. Otherwise, and then for little brick and all them too. We don't make video. What do you want me to do? I don't want to mm-hmm. go into the kitchen. Like, Hey, <laughs> mm-hmm. no, I don't know what Zuck's doing there. I get it, but I don't get it. He wants to be TikTok, but he released a shittier TikTok. I bet you they look at analytics and they're like, shit, the number of photos being posted versus the number of videos is flipping all around. And now people don't want to take photos. They want to take videos. Yeah. And if we miss out on the video, no one's going to be here and we're going to be. It's just going to encourage MySpace. people to walk around like this. You know what I mean? And just videotaping shit all the time. I don't want that. Nobody needs that. I don't think I have the update actually. Don't. don't do it. I'm don't do it, man. Side. Don't fight do the it. struggle. I fought an Instagram update because the old icon. Remember the old logo? Of course, it was like that. Uh, yeah, it was like brown or something. And I f- right? It was a TV screen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, right. And I was like, I don't like the new one, the pink one that looks like a dartboard. And mm-hmm. I held out. I don't blame you. Pace of play, out. man. Pace of play. Sometimes updates, they're not necessary. Mm-mm. Especially the iOS updates on your phone because that's when they kill the battery. Oh, we like on purpose. Uh, they'll like yeah, push yeah, out. Yeah, like yeah. if your phone is obsolete and you keep accepting OS updates, sooner or later they'll hit you with ones. How many phones do you run these days? Two. Yeah, I got two as well. Two. And my old one was a iPhone 10, I think. The battery lasts might maybe six minutes now. Really? <laughs> well, I'm exaggerating, but it <laughs> dies very quickly. <laughs> I had the one phone for quite a while in the beginning of the pandemic that I couldn't log out of any of my social medias on it. Yeah. Oh, no, wait, what was it? Yeah, I could only access. I went to my new phone. I tried to log in. It's like your password's incorrect, but my old phone could somehow still log in, but it had to be plugged in. The battery was so fried. So it just was plugged into the wall 24 hours a day. (laughs) And I was like, man, this is crazy times for me in the pandemic. Everything social media is weird. Like we just got two hacks on the nation. I know. What the fuck? Really? Yeah. In the middle of the night. I'll get an email from Instagram at like 3.30 a.m. saying there has been a change in your past. But the good thing about Instagram is like, this seems weird. We're going to freeze yeah. it. Yeah. So I'm allowed back in that way. Then I goes to log in and I'm like, this phone of mine, because I always blame my hardware for every problem. Of course. But then I text bag mail and I say, what the hell's going on? Yeah, that's this annoying. Happened again, one yeah. Damn. Two times in a matter spice. of days. Brute force attack, Liam. They tried. Sounds scary. We've been hacked so many times. I have no faith in passwords whatsoever. I just assume it's like leaving your front door open. There's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Unless you do like one of those rotating key passwords. (sighs) And then we're just going to lock ourselves out. I just don't have time. Well, yeah. I'd sooner just not post on social media as myself for two years because I got locked up. Well, yeah. My brother-in-law's got one of those... uh, it's like a key generator that every whatever it yeah. generates new passwords for some of his shit. And it's so annoying. Mm-hmm. How do you log in your online bank? Oh, I don't know. Hang on. Let me plug my key in and <laughs> fucking fire up a new password yeah. for it. I have notepad in my phones with like scrolling all the logins. I bet you I have 50 fucking logins on that thing. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. Do you need a drop of blood to access that note? Uh, no, no, but you do need face ID. Mm hmm. Do you need face ID? We're, I'm trying very hard not to get Wanya Jr. addicted to a screen. 
there's videos going around now on TikTok specifically of they're called iPad kids. Yeah. As they're grown up a little yeah. bit and they're weird. Yeah, man. <laughs> I think, and I'm not reading any books and I'm not asking anyone yeah, no, for I've help. No I have, expertise I'm moving only at my own speed with mm-hmm. this kid. We're making it all up together. But I'm like, I think I'd rather have him watching TV across the room because then it's like a shared experience mm-hmm. versus like how I roll, which is like very addicted to my phone. So now I'm starting to put it aside too, because you do get addicted as a little kid. You get little earphones in, you get your little iPad out. You're watching this preposterous shit on YouTube. Next thing you know. Well, and it fucks your, uh, your attention span, like for real, for real. Oh yeah. Big time. I was reading a book called the shallows by Nicholas Carr Mm. and is talking about what social media slash just having a controller in your hand, flip, flip, flip channels is doing to our brains. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Our mm -hmm, attention mm -hmm. span has been dwarfed from what I used to be. Oh, damn it. So I'm trying to fix that. Me too. I'm trying to try, I'm trying to read a lot more. I'm trying to read more too. At least 30 minutes a day. What are you reading right now? I'm reading the storyteller by David Grohl. How is it? Pretty good. Sad though. Yeah. So, I mean, like I just started cracked into it after his best friend died and spoiler, a big chunk of the book is about how good of friends they are. Uh, Hold on. You're telling me Kurt Cobain is dead. Mm-hmm. You would have thought yep. that's where he's been. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you haven't put out music in years. <laughs> what? Yeah. That makes sense. What are you reading? Beauties by James Duffy. <laughs> it's really cool. It's on brand. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I only read sports books. It's my only interest. Really? So I've read. Why is that? I just don't, I just don't care about some made up story. Let me ask you a question then. Okay. I just read a book. Uh, it's not new or anything, uh, called shoe dog by Phil Knight about the guy who founded Nike. Did oh, you read that? I actually would probably read that. Cause that book was, you read it, right? Oh yeah. It was amazing. Great. The really hustle that. that that guy put into yeah. making Nike get off the floor is pretty incredible. Yep. Yeah. Those stories are cool. I just like learning about stuff that's happened and like how people are calm. You don't want to read about like wizards and shit though. No, I just You're a watch wizard, shows Harry. in Marvel and... Oh, Ask me about the last two books I read. Go ahead. Ask me. What were the last two books you read? I want to tell you two because you need to see the duality <laughs> of man. <laughs> I read the Obama book, okay. which was a very long. And it's Michelle Obama or no, Barack, Barack Obama? Barack. Okay. But it's like 900 pages. Wow. And it's one of two. I'm sure that man has a lot to say. I read it, the whole thing in his voice too, like reading it. <laughs> I do that like, as well. <laughs> Michelle? No, 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 no. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> then I read this really interesting book called Obscene Profits, The Monetization of Pornography. <laughs> And it basically talks about how at every phase of the game, humanity's desire for pornography changes technologies and like VCRs. That was like the Blu-ray right. thing, right? Why the do people want VCRs? Blue. Porn. How come they p- put photos on the internet? Porn. How come? So like when we're in Saturn one day, we live in Saturn and there's like an interplanetary data link where people are like sending emails home from the Saturn station and sh- porn. <laughs> That's all it's going to be. Well, and the, yeah, so you finish that, that. So that's what I'm into. So if you want to read either one of the greatest leaders of the last 50 years or why humanity develops technology, it's pretty gross. Hmm. It's, it's an yeah. academic book, though. We're all gross, though. It cites there's no nudity, unfortunately, in the book. Ah. I was disappointed. Yeah, no there was pop-ups. nothing graphic at wasn't all. Wasn't a picture book? No, mm-hmm. no. I kind of hope when I ordered it, it was. Yeah. It didn't have like one of those things in the middle of the book where it just said like three or four pages of pictures. Nothing? First subscription service pornography right pornography went from being you had to buy dvds everywhere to it was shifted it was all free online and no one made any money but then it shifted again they made only fans and shit like they're rappers and porno are at the head of technology at all times interesting it's very interesting just wait till the rappers start making porno liam (laughs) they did snoop dogg i remember he minted it can we talk about porno and stuff in front of liam I don't know. That probably I'm not. Probably not. I am a young man. Yeah. You are. No. Your needs are insatiable. Never mind the listeners. Hey, yeah. how about them? Are you worried about them? People listening with exist. their kids in the car. Remember the one ch- gentleman? He said, stop oh, swearing. Yeah. I listened to him on the way to. Well, don't do that. Well, I'm in my head. Like, it, it, if you think about little kids listening, you're going to do a very different podcast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What if little kids are listening right now? What should we talk about? Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk about how... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got nothing for you. Kids. There is weird, <laughs> weird kids stuff on YouTube, like weird AI generated long trailing edge merging images of SpongeBob with gi- like I saw a thing. I find all kids shows to be weird. And this not is like AI generated. Like we're going to make 10,000 kids movies in an afternoon at a oh, data yeah. factory in Bangalore and see what the fuck YouTube plays of it. 
Interesting. You have to watch your kid because if they get on a playlist, they may fall down this weird rabbit of hole course. where video 150 is of like course. salad fingers type <laughs> shit. Uh, Wanya Jr. Fingers. comes up with like spinning retinas and he's like, father, and then fork to the eye. I'm yeah, it's probably a good idea that you're keeping Wanya Jr. away from some of the screens <laughs> to the left to his own devices. It's alarming. Yeah. We grew up in a different time, man. Oh, yeah. There was no space computer in my pocket. My first oh. phone, Liam. Couldn't even send text messages. And how old were you when you got your first phone? 17. Yeah. I think I was like, I bet I was 10. But my phone was strict. The only numbers I had in my phone were my parents. 911. Yeah. (laughs) Emergencies only. And I didn't even really know how to send a text. So I would just call and I would play Snake on my phone. And that Uh, was it. And it was about this big. And it was real, despite being this big, this big. When I was in grade 10, I had my own cell phone that I paid for. And it was such a shocking thing to see that when I was on my phone in the hallway, a teacher came up to me and was like, give me that phone. Mm. I was like, what do you mean? They're like, you can't just be on the phone when you're in a school. I'm like, what do you mean? I can't be on them. Like, like a nineties rapper, <laughs> right? I'm like, what do you mean? I can't be on the phone. They're like, give us this phone. I'm like, you won't, it won't be like this. You know, you won't just be able to take people's phones away in 10 years. And I was rapping. I remember my teacher told me that I would never be able to use a calculator when I was an adult. Well, wrong. Here we are. I've got one in my phone, in my supercomputer, in my pocket. Phone isn't the right name for the device we call a phone. Not at all. And being on the actual phone is probably like 10th on the list of yeah, what you I, use the phone I for. I do very little actual phoning on it. And we all talk about our phones like they're the bane of our existence. And you never had that with a computer. Like you never heard people like my fucking desktop, my desktop, my laptop, my de-. but phones, it's like too portable and too connected. When was the first time you got really annoyed by people with phones? Because I can think of it right now. Do you remember when Pokemon Go first launched oh and you'd be God, downtown yeah. and everybody be walking face yeah. in screen? Yeah. That was the first time I got really annoyed, annoyed by smartphones. I, be, I feel as though I've been on the edge of technology. Like I'm an early adopter of stuff. And I remember Jay and I went to Thailand in like 2012 and we were working remotely. And I was like, this is fucking crazy. Like we're running Oilers nation from Thailand. Like we never have to go back to reality ever again. (laughs) That was an amazing freedom. The technology brought, but then the curse, everything's like, I just watched the Garth Brooks documentary. This is a good segue. Have you watched this thing on Netflix? Garth Garth Brooks. Brooks? Have you heard of this guy? Garth Brooks. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of him. I haven't seen the uh, documentary. I know his wife. Mm. Oh, 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 you're more of a Trisha Yearwood fan. Do you know why I actually met Trisha Yearwood? Come on. Accidentally. So, but I didn't meet her. So Mm. this is a strange beginning to the story. I was in Nashville, uh, right before the pandemic and a bunch of my buddies went and I went to the, uh, not the hockey hall of fame, the country music hall of fame. Yeah. And we were walking around and we were leaving and there was a huge crowd and it was this lady and like was signing all these autographs and we're like, Oh, who's that? And none of us knew. And we walked outside and it was this big tour truck that said, Trisha Irwood on the side of Yearwood. it. Yearwood. Yearwood. Yeah, the exact massive fan. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, yeah, that must have been her. And then I found out years later, it was uh, his wife. Years later? <laughs> was it like, like just now? I, I found out actually a couple of weeks ago oh. when he was here. That was a, like the time before the pandemic and yeah. then years later. Yeah. Shit. My favorite Trisha, Trisha Irwood, Irwood. Uh, story comes with, I went and saw Garth Brooks when he was here. We're talking banner hanging Garth Brooks tour. Whoa. Uh, so I went and saw them and my favorite, it made me laugh out loud. Trisha Yearwood comes out. She's opening for Garth Brooks and she says, you might remember this next song from 1997's Con Air. And I laughed out loud because at this point it's like 2019 or some shit like that, 2018. And I was like, Con Air, when the fuck did that movie come out? <laughs> Garth Brooks, I think, goes city to city doing like five show mega sellouts everywhere. Yeah. I think we just take credit for this. Like, this is the only place oh, it's yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. He's he got more money than Ireland. Con. Ireland. This yeah. is what this documentary said. Like, he hadn't done a show in 14 years and he goes to Ireland and does five, five sold out yeah. shows in Dublin. And like, yeah. And the neighborhood fought him and said, you shouldn't be allowed to do that many shows because we're basically sealed alive in this neighborhood for five days. The neighborhood? Yeah, because it's, like it's like a residential arena. Oh, I see what you mean. Right? Yeah. They're like, we don't want to be locked inside the Garth zone for five consecutive <laughs> nights. They shouldn't have done this. And then he stood up to Ireland and was like, fuck you. I'm fuck Garth you, Brooks. Ireland. And they're like, 299,000 people were in line to buy his first show in the States in 14 years in Chicago. I like, went. 
man, when you see this documentary, this guy is channeling something much larger than himself. Yeah. He's from a very normal family of civilians, the middle of fucking nowhere. And then he got the angel dust from the gods on the head and just exploded. What I would say about going to see Garth Brooks is I've never seen anyone other than Paul McCartney command the audience the mm -hmm. way he does. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a religious experience yes, for man. some people to mm -hmm. go see Garth Brooks. It's crazy, like just seeing the documentary and seeing how he moves and seeing how he talks and seeing how his kids talk to him and see like this guy is evolved. Yeah, he's always popping up on Facebook from Studio G. Really? Yeah. And was he just talking? He's just talking to the fans. Just chilling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he is smart. He took 14 years off, man. And he took 14 years off because his kids said both weird. Both, he says, I think like me. And they said, my kids said a weird word. And then I said, why do they say it like that? And I realized, because that's how the nanny talked. And I realized I wasn't raising my own kids. He cried every other scene in this documentary. Too. Well, you got it. So he took 14 yeah. years off and hung out on a ranch with his kids every single day for 14 years as the biggest musician really in the world. Then came back and had like he hadn't missed a beat. I respect that. Who the hell can do that? When you have more money than God, you can do that. Is that why he's tall was so big when he came back? Was did his 14 year run just end? Which yeah, like his kids restarted. grew up and they were like, I'm going to go crazy because I got nothing to do. And then Trisha Irwood, Irwood says Irwood, to Irwood. her, says to him, hey, you should do music. And he was like, do you think anyone will come to my show? <laughs> and she's like, I think so. And then the next thing you know. Now he's got banners everywhere. He's crazy with it, man. That might be one of the most, like I've heard, I've seen things about how musicians channel music and the, I can't remember who was talking about Kanye West. Oh, John Mayer. He said, Kanye West just like goes into rain man mode and hears a new song and 30 seconds later just blurts out the melody and That's they just crazy. have the ability to summon music into the, like wherever it comes mm -hmm. from. And I feel like he's like that, but he worked with a team of people. He had like a lot of different writers and shit. Yeah, that makes sense. It reminds me of uh, I was, I wish I could, it was probably in the Howard Stern show. Billy Joel was there and he said, he's always got a song in his head. So yeah. Howard just said, will you play what's in your head right now? He's like, yeah, absolutely. Really? Yeah. yeah. Does it on the piano. Wow. Billy Joel's in that thing. They did a duet in central park. It was unbelievable. Billy Joel's amazing. I'd love to go to New York, to see Billy Joel. Really? Yeah. You love Billy Joel. You're a complicated. Yeah. Man. I do like Billy Joel. The piano man. The Piano man is great. What's your favorite Billy Joel song? Uh, scenes from Italian restaurant. I don't know that I've ever heard that before. So scenes from an Italian restaurant is kind of like three separate songs mashed together. And the reason he did that is he had three parts of songs kind of written, but not finished. So he's like, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I might just chuck them. And then Paul McCartney told me, he's like, why don't you just mash them all together and call that one song we do with the Beatles all the time. No like, shit. Really? So whoosh, scenes from an Italian restaurant. Summer is officially here, and what a better way to cool off than at the rink during the first ever Summer World Juniors season. Uh, single game tickets for the tournament are on sale now, starting at 40 bucks. Grab your sunglasses. The brightest stars in the junior game are coming to Edmonton in August. Tickets are available all over the place for the World Juniors. Liam will be there. I will be there. You're playing in the World Juniors? Me and Connor Bedard. No fooling. I'm On sure. a line? Yeah, I'm going to be like Patrick Maroon and Connor McDavid. I'm just going to stand in the post. And Who are you, Patrick in. Maroon or Connor McDavid? <laughs> uh, Patrick Maroon. Oh, nice. Yeah. Congratulations. We will be covering the tournament for us for the Nation Network. Mm -hmm. It'll be very fun. That's cool. Like in the media row? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. I did it last year when really? we were in, uh, like people weren't allowed in. I would watch the game with my dad. And I would go run down in the basement and <laughs> interview all these kids. No really way. My dad would come around with his camera and like try and video me and send it to my grandparents. I was like, dad, I'm <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> Connor Bedard. <laughs> you didn't talk to Connor Bedard, did you? I My question didn't get in for, oh. for the Canadian Oh, you were ones. in like the virtual scrum. Yeah, the virtual scrum. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so I spoke with uh, I spoke with Luca Munzenberger, who's an Oilers draft pick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He was cool. I spoke with a couple of the Finnish guys. I spoke with like most of the teams before everything shut down that's cool it was really cool actually. so what happens this year at the world juniors uh again tickets are available everywhere they're not starting up where they quit are they no it's all the re it's restyling that's right they canceled the thing mid tournament yeah, yeah so it's funny though because like what an age but dodd had that game where he had like tied gretzky's record or beat gretzky but now it doesn't count because technically it never happened according to the history uh, books it's just erased so was that like a, he was a 16 year old and did something? Yeah. Or? I think he had like six, six or seven points or something crazy like that. And Gretzky was the Remember only there was the one that. goal making the rounds Bedard did in the air last year yeah. before they canceled it. And he was like coming on the wing and then he went on the boards and just deflected off somebody and then went in and went roof. 
That kid yeah. has got a hell of a shot. He's what a he's a scary player. He's, he's a gonna freak. be unbelievable. Do you think he, he'll be better than the other Connor? And I don't mean Brown. <laughs> I think he's got a chance to be the best player in the league. He's just a bit smaller. It's the Crosby to the McDavid. McDavid to the Bedard. Yeah, probably. Ten year gap. I think that's kind of what it'll be. He said he's a little bit smaller than Connor because Connor's like what six foot even probably. Yeah, I'm not sure how tall he is. I remember watching him once at the John Reed tournament in St. Albert. At the which? The John Reed. It's a mm. Bantam tournament, mm. but he was You go to Bantam tournaments? You love I, prospects. I'm hey? the head scout of the Show Park Crusaders. You're the head scout <laughs> of the Sherwood Park Crusaders. Yeah, the crew mobile outside. I is thought mine. you were the mascot or something. <laughs> You're the head scout. I am the head scout. This year, form uh, officially, yeah. Well, that's fucking interesting. How did you get so into hockey prospects? Um, I just I, don't, I just started writing for this website called Draft Geek, and they were mostly scouting. And I was like, I would go to these games and I would write about these kids, and I'm like, wow, I wonder what scouting would be like. Liam, so I just started doing that. I'm racist against you. I want to be honest because you have a British accent. I just I dismiss your be. hockey knowledge. <laughs> it's okay. I'm a dick. No, I'm people are confessional. Amazed. I am like, I feel like, why would you care about hockey when you have a huge soccer podcast? Cause nobody, nobody watches it over here. I have like three friends. So to who fit in, soccer. you're the head scout of the Sherwood Park Crusaders. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, that's what I do. What the fuck? Anything to get that uh, citizenship. Good gravy. <laughs> you might be. Wow. <laughs> Did you know this? Oh, well, I didn't know the backstory, so that's why I want to get into it a little bit. So you started Is like this the writing the interview? About, yeah, I mean, because we've got nothing else planned, so we might as well start. Oh, this yeah. is much more interesting than most things. Yeah, we got 35 minutes here, so talk slowly. Okay. I got lots of stuff I want to talk about. There's not a lack of ideas, don't worry. Oh, I'm not worried about it. I'm I just got, being an asshole. I want to know, but like, so you started, shine. like you were just writing about him for free? Yeah, and I, I've this, is, this will be the first year I've got paid to do it, and I've been doing it for like six years now. You fucking love hockey prospects. I just love hockey. I don't know. It's just fun. I just go to the rink and just hang out there and just meet people from all these teams and watch these kids play. Like you see, like like the first time I saw Conor Bedard play, he had seven points in a game. And he, do you know that Bobby Ryan thing where he like mm-hmm. goes over the head? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I saw Conor Bedard do that at 13 years old to like some 15 year old kid. What the fuck? <laughs> Walked just demoralizing him. Yeah, and it was like, whoa, and there was like 40 people in this rink. Then you just ran out of the arena and then drove the Sherwood Park Crusaders truck through the wall <laughs> into the arena and just started laying on your horn, eh? Honk, honk. honk. This is what happens when you see Connor Bedard as a scout. <laughs> honk, honk, honk. <laughs> so who are you scouting for the Sherwood Park Crusaders? Triple A midget and double A midget? Yeah, so midget triple a i guess it's called u18 triple a now and u16 triple a and then we have u15 triple a which is like we'll probably take like this year we had a camp in about a month ago and we had 10 or 15 u15 players and you hope to get like two or three of them eventually down the line who owns the Sherwood park crusaders um ryan maxwell who and kevin love not the basketball player okay these are young men old men middle of the road uh Kevin's in his 50s, and I think Ryan's in his 40s. Then you have a team president. Who is Kevin, also. And then there's a general manager. Yep. Who is? Adam Surgery. And then he says to you, who should we pick? Yeah. We kind of, so he just became the GM last year, and and then he hired me to be the head scout. How did you know him? Uh, he He was in the organization, and I was working there doing social media, and I just worked my way through and became... You started as a social media guy and became the head scout? I started as an intern out of Nate Radio Program Money. and became a head Actual scout. Fuck. Good for you, man. Good for you, buddy. Yeah. Cheers, man. Thank you. The, it's, lo- uh, the way to actually way succeed, yeah, is doing shit for free. And yeah. that was never explained to me as a little kid. Yeah, I never knew that either until I just started... Like, I did my internship and I was like, oh, well, I actually learned a lot and I got a job out of this. And then my parents didn't quite understand it at first. Like I was doing writing for like Dub Network and stuff like that. Do you guys know that website, Dub Network? So I would go to Oil Kings games and write on them. And then a bunch of other stuff. And then then I just ended up here. Tyler called me and was like, yeah, I just seen you do everything for free. So why don't you come make a couple hundred bucks here for a little I remember yelling at Tyler one time, find more of people like you for (laughs) fuck's sakes. And then running away. And he's like, there are no people like me. I'm the greatest. And then Liam showed up. Yeah. (laughs) Now you're better, Tyler. Here I am. If Wanya Jr. ever asked me for advice, which he won't because he's already smarter than I am, but he said, I, I, what do I, how do I get to, to be where I want to be? I'd just be like, whatever you want to do, do it for free. 
Yeah. Because no one can stop you from doing shit for free. Mm -hmm. You can be like, I started up my own hockey website and I wrote on it every day for a year. And that's the story of fucking Oilers Nation. Well, that's what Tyler and I did because we had that BTI hockey when we were at Nate. I actually found the hat the other day and we just write on there for free. That's the way to do it though, yeah. man. And like people, I remember when I was younger, people would always like, oh, like go and volunteer at these charities and stuff like that. Mm. And it's like, that's really good. <laughs> but like, what's the difference between just yeah. doing it for yourself? Yeah. And I'm not saying don't volunteer for charities. You heard it here first. Liam yes. says don't volunteer for Don't Make that do the title. charitable work. <laughs> yeah. So uh, just do, do charity work for yourself. Yeah. You're your own charity. Yeah. Well, that's how I got this gig is I did a lot of shit for free. Yeah. Kind of. We can tell Liam in. stories from the olden days if you want. I listened good. to the show. What show? The Better Late Than Never episode. Oh, yeah. When we the, chatted? The monster yeah, run. That was awesome. Incidentally. Oh, was it? I love that one. Sorry about the birds on that show. Oh, it was, it was very... Uh, Sounds like I phoned you from a fucking bird's nest. <laughs> no, you know what? It's very, uh, it's very like, uh, dreamlike. Look very like strange. A couple people DM the me. Back. They're like, why did you phone bag milk for the show from a bird's nest? <laughs> people need to relax sometimes. We're just having a casual chat, and if it takes an hour and there's birdies in the background, so be it. Wanya Manor is enormous. And it's mm -hmm. four floors. And I've tried... Do you have a bird floor? Well, so I've slept in every bedroom, <laughs> right? Okay. Earlier in the you-know-what 19, I was sleeping in different bedrooms every night to give myself the illusion of going places, <laughs> right? And I moved my office. I've been in every room in the house. And now I'm on the third floor. And there's a big sunlight, sunroof thing behind me where I was talking. And outside the sunroof is a tree, and in the tree are the birds. So it sounds as though I'm in a bird's nest because where I'm now, I realize talking six feet away as the crow flies through the roof of Wanya Manor is a damn bird's nest. No. What kind we of had a good chat. I don't know. I don't know. Probably uh, magpies. Mm. But no, they were tweeting. Yeah, they were doing birds. There were birds doing bird shit. Like, ah, 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 ah. No, no, no. They weren't angry crows. No, no, no. No. Well, thank you for listening to that episode. Yeah, well, then we don't have to talk I about I listen to most of them. Really? I listen to quite, I listen to what I can. I listen to a lot of Better Late Than Never, too, I'll be thank honest. Thank you. On YouTube. Thoughts? No. Very good. You have a very calm, sterny in type way. You listen on YouTube? Yeah. You just put it on and just let it roll? I listen and watch YouTube all day long. Oh, okay, cool. That's good to know. I don't watch cable anymore, except for sports. I don't have cable either. No? Well, I can't afford it. And what? I just have every streaming service in the entire world so what's i can't afford cable, cable but i have peacock for 49 dollars <laughs> a month us <laughs> you can steal all the streams i mean you know this allegedly yeah some people say i used to get a lot of flack on twitter for telling people they could steal games i used to get in trouble too when i would uh, I direct care. people to the uh, hockey reddit yeah but they used to have all those streams r.i.p yeah there's a couple of them i got stashed up here <laughs> just in case just he pointed case. to his head yeah <laughs> that's the narrator that's the vault all right just drive two minutes to my dad's house and watch the game with him He's youtube wrong. is the best channel ever i don't know how you can watch cbs anymore i think yeah. youtube's the best because it's not really changed that much like the we were just talking shit, about yeah, instagram and like valid. how they're trying to do all these different yeah. things to be like compete with other people it's like mm. youtube's like oh we'll do that but our main focus will still be what it's been the entire time. Yeah. Because now you can do live and like yeah. the shorts and stuff. It's like, yeah, great. But the point of it is to have like a little like video on there. And the amazing part about YouTube is they don't, well, I mean, they do it to an extent, but they don't really make their own content. They just aggregate, so baby. Aggregating mm -hmm. other people's content. That's all yeah. it's about, man. And mm -hmm. then they just bring those people who use those video, who make those videos and just put them on their own things for like, they do that yearly video, right? The rewind, I think. It's oh called. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's how they make money from. I have a hard time with YouTube because I've, there's so much to watch. I almost get paralysis by choice sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to watch. My I algorithm at home is like my dear friend that knows me better than I know. Well, what are you myself. watching? I'm like, are you sure like YouTube? What you're watching. What am I watching these days? I've been watching a lot of just the news of the world to try to figure out what the hell is going on. Yeah. Right. So I was watching NHK the other day, which was the Japanese news service mm. to try to get the gist of what's going on over there after poor old Abe Shinzo. Got Dude, that's insane. <laughs> Kablamo. You see Wild. I didn't see it, but I heard guy wow. made his own gun. Yeah. That was a, uh, anyways, I like to see what the people on the ground are talking about. Yeah. But uh, I learned that what I was really into before, which is like people digging a hole with a piece of bamboo in the jungle and I making a, it's fake. Apparently, can you believe it? What? Yeah, do you know those fun. shows? You ever watch that where a guy takes like a rock and makes himself a village, like literally? <laughs> no, they'll get like a yeah. piece of bamboo and then like sharpen the bamboo and use it as a shovel, and then they start digging an underground house with a 
like water in it and shit. Oh, like a little underground igloo. Yeah, they build all sorts of crazy shit. Yeah, Anyways, apparently they use an excavator. Yeah, that's bullshit. But I mean, obviously. Like, I really enjoy, because uh, I love traveling there. Yeah. Uh, walking tours of cities I have yep. yet to go to. Oh, that's I've cool. been doing that hardcore in the pandemic. Yeah. Pan- uh, Wani got me out to those in the pandemic. I really enjoy them. They're relaxing. If you watch, like I watched Tokyo maybe three or four weeks ago, and I probably watched four or five of them while I'm working, right? Just have it on the background. But it, honestly, by the end of the day, like when a, you watch a new walking tour of Tokyo, you're like, oh, I wonder if we're going to go there. Oh, mm-hmm. I wonder if we're going to go there. Oh, I wonder. And so that's what I'm into mostly these days is like a theme. So Japanese walking tours, watching NHK, that sort of thing. Yeah. What do you watch on YouTube? Um, not like a ton of stuff. Like I actually watch YouTube videos to send me asleep. You ever seen those videos? It's like everything wrong with, and it's like those movies and the guy just watches a movie and he just jokes about what's wrong with every movie. Yeah. Somehow his voice just sends me to sleep every night. Yeah. It's amazing. My dad watches a shit ton of YouTube. You ever listen to like the 450 megahertz videos and stuff? It's like, you were telling me about these today for the first time. No, I'll watch that when I go to bed like ambient music with supposedly like a good frequency to like help you sleep better. I'm down. I'm down for like all this that. new wave shit. I like that a lot. Better living through technology. There is no better way to put me to sleep though. However, uh, David Attenborough, mm. Mm. that man's voice has yeah. put me to sleep so many like times. 96. I know. Yeah. And he's still doing it. I found that out the other day. He's the, the Don game. Cherry of nature documentaries. Yeah. yeah. Trivial. Is it trivial pursuit or trivia pursuit? Trivial invented in Edmonton. Really? I had a massive win at that the other day. Did you? My girlfriend's family are geniuses. We Uh-oh. got teachers, doctors, head scouts, engineers. That did it to fit in? And yeah. somehow, you fit in, sir. this man came out on top. I believe it. I, I couldn't believe it. I am I, not shocked. I have never beat them in any game. They're a very competitive family. <laughs> and it was the wedding I went to was a sister's. And I told people at the wedding what happened. And every time I told someone, they went, how pissed off were they? And I was like, they were all furious. <laughs> None of them were happy. Yeah, <laughs> I get that. Well, congratulations on your victory. Thank you. It was it was big for me. I, I really needed that. Well, it's nice to hold one over the fa- the in laws. Well, you can place. always just like look at your girlfriend's parents and wink. <laughs> like you have cachet, right? Like you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and it's my game too, so we never have to play again. This guy's so a I'll loser. You're like, am I really though? Wink. <laughs> yeah. yeah, retire yeah. undefeated. Yeah. That's yeah. what I say. Retire yeah. undefeated. Yeah, <laughs> may as well. What else do you want to talk about? Well, I mean, there's a lot of things we can talk about. Is there any uh, things that we need to hype, first of all, for travel? Uh, nationgear.ca, if you want to come with us to Toronto, August 12th. We are there for two Jays games and a TFC game. T- uh, tickets and info are all available at nationgear.ca. Same with the Oilers Nation Open. That one is selling out quickly, so if you want to golf with us, you better hurry procrastination will be your enemy friends again nationgear.ca check out everything for the oilers nation open the golf tournament that's taking place in august always a great time you might even see liam there you might even see liam there head scout head scout are you going to be a head scout like in higher levels of hockey i hope so my goal is to make it to the nhl in some way really yeah i mean how old are you 20 i just turned 26 oh my god you'll do it of course so keep pushing the next step is whl and then just kind of work there for a bit and then take it from there so how about a notable blogger on oilersnation.com if that's what it takes there you go hello that would give you some clout yeah of course Frank Sarah like valley man someone tweeted a picture of me of bananas today so that's really taken off you that love was, bananas you do love i bananas. do i'm a fan i actually haven't ate them a ton recently well because i've had so many <laughs> you should probably start storing them because as we learned from uh, rick yeah. on friday bananas are going in extinct. which is they've been saying this i remember in junior <laughs> high being like really and then eating them like you being like better get the last one in there'll be bananas don't <laughs> i had worry. never heard this until rick brought it up. let's not get ahead of ourselves and think there won't be bananas well all i'm saying is mix them in while you can yeah let's hope not we need our potassium mm-hmm. it was racism that blinded me again i didn't realize you were such a hockey savant i thought it was yeah. soccer and you're just humoring us no actually i don't know i'm such i'm kind of weird like i i my favorite sport is honestly probably basketball just because I don't know enough about like the contracts and that kind of stuff that I'm like a legit fan and I just enjoy it where hockey is like, you just know so much about everything. So are you mad analytical and shit? No, not really. Do like, you just sit down with the clipboard and watch the kids for vibes or what? Yeah. I got my, I got my stuff that I need to check off and I just watch them and I just grade them, watch them throughout the year and decide, 
who I like and who I don't like. Have you gone off grid and picked a winner for the Crusaders where they're like, because of Liam, we got old Dicky Tungsten over here. Uh, we, scored 10. We had a kid this year we just signed called Brock Such, who some people may recognize the name. Caught a Such, played for the Oil Kings, and he just graduated with them. So Brock's probably better, and that's kind of like my guy, and I've been watching him since he was 14. Really? And he just signed with us, so that was a big one. At your recommendation? Yep. Yeah, Good like for you. Came for camps and then just kind of pushed him through. Damn, Liam. It worked out. Liam knows shit. I know a couple of things. He's been walking around behind the scenes pretending like he doesn't know shit, but he does. <laughs> WHL scouting would be fun. It is fun. And there's just so many tournaments that you just get to go to for well, for free. Someone sends you there. A ton in BC. Those are the good ones you want to try and get to. I haven't been lucky to get to them yet because Junior A does not have the budget to send people there. But I could drive. I go to Winter Sport quite a bit. It's a great facility. You yeah. There? The Olympic Park one. It's amazing. If you ever get you ever get the chance. I live mostly in the metaverse. Fair enough. I just live through Liam. Yeah. Well, now yeah. I know he's the damn brains of this whole operation. <laughs> yeah. I've been kissing up to the wrong people. Yeah. We're hiring smart people around Yeah. Here. Seemingly. Yeah. When I was in charge, we used to hire serial killers for the most part. Yeah. One time I hired a graphic designer because we were wearing the same hat at the job interview. Yeah, that is true. Well, he's got style. I'm like, that is just an unbelievable coincidence. <laughs> you must come and work here. Never mind how terrible you are at the art. And how long did they last? A while. Yeah. Well, yep. We also didn't have the heart <laughs> to fire people. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Or the old graphics would Not come. long on competency. I could never be a scout. I'd be like, that guy has a cool stick tape job. Let's draft him. <laughs> look at that guy. You got draft by name, you know, an all name team. Yeah. That guy That's has white skates. Look how fast they make him look. Let's draft white See, skates. That would be my problem, too, if I was a scout. I would get hung up on the details that don't mean anything to anybody. I only played hockey one year, and I was horrible. I can't play hockey. And I was constantly intimidated by people if they had nice gloves. <laughs> so I'd go out on the ice, Adam tier 15. I'm not even kidding. And I'd skate around the ice and look at everybody. And lots of times I'd forget my cup at home too. It was a disaster. Oh, no. I wasn't very old, but I remember one time getting beaned in the beans because I didn't have a cup on. I was like, what are the odds I get hit? And the odds were pretty good. <laughs> yeah. It didn't take long. But uh, if a kid had like new gloves and an Easton aluminum, I was like, well, there's no competing with him. He's got his life together. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone had shitty equipment and they were good. I was always floored. I'm like, I don't understand. How does this even happen? Why don't you have better gloves? You're very good at hockey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also insisted on wearing pants instead of <laughs> socks. Yes. And they weren't okay. remotely in style. <laughs> and I remember seeing pictures of the Philadelphia Flyers and being like, that seems to me like an innovation that should have like they got one team in the NHL to wear Cooper all pants mm -hmm. and their people are like this is the death blow for the hockey sock industry and somehow <laughs> or other it didn't yeah but i was like the only kid in organized sports on like a five-year window on other side wearing pants because i insisted i had to go to like totem three times before i found them <laughs> i think the nhl should bring back hooper alls it was an evolution like it was an innovation that i thought looked dope i think that they should mix them in the whole year, people are like, why do you wear pants? Like on the other team. I'm like, this is how you do it. <laughs> I get it. It was not how you do it, Liam. You would have noted me had you been scouting. <laughs> Although you would have been several years unborn. You'd be like, hey, <laughs> that guy with the pants. And then you'd say something like, he can only do crossovers in one direction. <laughs> that is pathetic. This is why there wasn't a second year. I just really wanted to play so bad, but my parents wouldn't let me. Took till grade six to get through. He can't have a running start if you don't get to play till grade six. No. Nope. Fuck. You're probably scouting kids younger than that. Well, I mean, you said you saw Connor Bedard ruling at 13. Isn't that yeah. grade six? Somewhere? I couldn't have done that even with the pants. He was, uh, so he played above his age groups because he was obviously so good. So the youngest we go is 14, I guess. So one year. Didn't wear pants though. Yeah, mm -hmm. no pants. So no. No. no pants. Fuck was I fly. Of course. Yeah. When I also played soccer, when I was good at soccer, that was different. I really always wanted to wear the goalie's jersey because I thought mm. it looked flyer than the ones the other ones had to wear. As a result, I insisted on playing goal many games. I was also a goalie in soccer. Yeah, I was a goalie too. I was so bad at goalie though. So there was a kid in England, and his name was Billy O'Brien. Ah, and of I was course. so bad at goal that one day he went and played goal. Yeah. And he went on to play professionally. Come on. Yeah. He doesn't play anymore, but he played for the <laughs> Wales under 19 team. You were the boot script. I was, I'm the man who started that journey. 
You know what boot yeah. script is? Yo's you. I have no idea. When you're when you're like loading a video game and the EA Sports logo comes on and it's processing, ah, that's that the boot me. script. So you're the boot script for that guy's career. Yeah. You were just there to be relieved from goal so he could go in to dominate. Yeah, so I remember, so he was a big Manchester City fan. That was before they were good at all. And he got signed by Manchester United, which is like, People didn't really do. You could make a case that you're as good as this guy. <laughs> he was your peer at one point in at your one come point, up. At one point. And then uh, he played for City, and then he didn't work out, went to Scotland, went to Wales, and now he's in the military. Yeah. So there you go, at 26. What in the fuck? Yeah, what a You've journey. lived a hell of a you life. You have lived a hell of a life. I've been everywhere. Here, there, and everywhere. How long you yeah. lived in Edmonton for? Uh, 12 years. Oh, my God. I felt like you just arrived. No. Well, racism has really <laughs> crippled my. Uh, hmm. What brought you here to Edmonton? Oil and gas. Ah, uh, of course, <laughs> of course, of course. You, I assume, wanted to work as a child. On a <laughs> yeah. to Liam had dreams. I insisted. Yeah. Yeah. I told my parents, "People move for their kids' Hollywood careers. <laughs> you move for my oil and gas career." Yeah, not for me. My dad. He's an engineer. No, he uh, drives semis. Oh. Yeah. So was he up at Fort Mac or was he here in Edmonton? He was, he's here in Edmonton. He drove everywhere. He went oh. to a company called West Ken. They're, uh, I think, well, they're kind of based all over. So when we moved, they were like, so you can move to Lloydminster, Medicine Hat or Sherwood Park. Decent call. And my parents came over. And, like, so they just looked at pictures. Were they recruiting like, in the UK? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my parents uh, looked at pictures and were like, oh, like, I wonder where we'll go. So they saw Sherwood Park as, oh, this place looks good. And then they decided on Sherwood Park. It's like, could you imagine if I lived in Medicine Hat or Lloydminster? It would not, I would not be the same man I am. You'd probably today. be the GM of the Medicine Hat Tigers. <laughs> so they're in England. How did your dad get word of like, go move to Canada? Like, Just what from was the people who had moved. So he had a friend who had tried to do it before and it just didn't work out for him. So he told my dad about it. You're driving dad, like tanker like, trucks? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my So my dad worked at Esso in England and then... He found out about it, told my dad, and then my dad kind of looked into it, and that's how it just kind of played on. And it was a guy who my dad had worked with in England who had already who had done it, and he just got in t- contact with him and just kind of worked it out that way. And then cool, it just happened. I respect people have the nuts to move like that. Yeah, it's a big 100%. move. And obviously, I hated it at yeah, the time, but now sure. I wouldn't change it for anything. So you came over. You'd been like fourteen then, roughly. Yeah, I was fourteen. Do you remember your dad coming and telling you? Yeah, and Were I, you like it was fuck crazy. we are so, old man. So we lived here for a little bit in 2007 and moved back. And then I went to high school for 3 years in England and then just one day my dad was like, "Yeah, we're moving to Canada in 2 weeks." And you were already done high school at this point? No, I was halfway through. So we so I was yeah, 14, 3 years into high school and my dad was just Hold like, on, hold on. How long <laughs> is high school in England? 11 uh, 11 to 16. Wait a minute, and where do you go when you're 17 and 18? College or nowhere. College? <laughs> at 17? Yes. None of this shit lines up. No. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so if you're an 18-year-old British student, you're in your second year of university? Yes. I think so. Yeah. Or, or, or just- college or whatever, yeah. Or just working. Working the docks, as they say. Yeah. Do you feel like the, the economy in Canada is much better than England? Yeah, I think so. England is just so populated. There's like 66 million people that live there. It's and what is it here? Thirty, yeah, like that, And I think they say Great Britain is a size like you could fit Great Britain in Alberta three times, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's just not enough room for people. Like my my cousin was fitting windows for six pounds an hour after high school, which is like twelve bucks. Yeah, when he was thirteen. <laughs> That's good money when you're <laughs> yeah 13. after high school. He yeah. was like twelve after high school was done. So he was loving that, and then yeah, so we moved here, the land of opportunity. I believe it. Do you yeah. believe it? I do now. I find it interesting that you came over at 14 and in a matter of 12 years, you not only developed a love of hockey, but became a head scout for an organization. (laughs) Fucking hell. Thank Jordan Eberle. Jordan Eberle's goal is kind of what made me. That's who I loved. Yeah. That that goal (laughs) against Calgary in his first, cause that, yeah. So my first like real hockey moment was Magnus Pajavi's hat Hat trick trick. (gasps) against the Tampa Tampa Lightning. Lightning. I was there. Our lives converge. Holy smokes. And they just got Hall. My favorite number was four. So I was like, okay, well, this is working out well. And then Eberle scored that goal against Calgary. And then I thought, wow. On this very podcast, first 20 episodes, Magnus Pajavi came on from Sweden. Oh, really? It was Gregor and Stredrick and your old pal Wanye teaching me the craft, the art. 
and I blurted out because I don't know what I'm doing. <gasps> I remember when you got that hat trick. I thought you were going to be so good. Who <laughs> says this? And he goes, yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> and then I go, oh. And then Strider goes, I'm leaving this podcast. And then Gregor goes, I'm leaving this podcast too. And I was like, big milk, everybody left the podcast. Will you come on with me? And you were like, fine. And then here we are. Now we've yeah. ascended to Liam's level. Yeah. We're on a head scouts podcast. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. I am the new, the real life of Liam hmm. podcast. That was a good show. I'd listen to that. Yeah. So how long till you're qualified to be a WHL scout? Are you already qualified? Uh, I'm probably qualified now, but I would like to do the head scout. Looks better on a resume. For five, how many five, years? A couple of years, maybe. See how it goes. I like. I've been a scout for the Crusaders. This will be my third season as a employee of the team, I guess, as a scout. So I'm excited. I mean, it'll be cool to call the shots a little bit. Where were you living in England? Uh, a town called Bolton, which is in the northwest by Manchester. Like Michael Bolton. B O L T O N yep. just minus the Michael. Okay. So you're in Michael Bolton <laughs> and your dad spins the globe and hits Sherwood park. Yeah. And then you're running their hockey team somehow, some way. Yes. If We've you spun well. the globe and Wanya junior and I moved to Bolton, <laughs> there's a fat fucking chance. I would be in charge of the soccer team. Yeah. Although you never know. Yeah. Who knows? I have a lot of respect for you. Thank you. You have to kill Tyler. your M check. There yeah, can only, there be, can only one. be one. I can only have respect for one producer of the show, and it can no longer be him because his boy genius career, <laughs> you're the Connor Bedard to his Connor McDavid. There's There's an even enough. younger Urem Chuck who's smarter than him. I'm older than Tyler. Yeah, you're, he's older by <laughs> two, three years. <laughs> Sorry, well, I just had an aneurysm. <laughs> How much older than Tyler Urem Chuck are you? I think Tyler's 24. I, I think. think. So. I'm See, I have a hatred of him like he's older <laughs> than me. His spirit. Yeah, it's all wrong. Oh, he's an old soul for sure. He's a very old soul. He's yeah. only 24 years old. Something like that. Yeah. Right Jeez around that. He might even be 23, actually. I think he's And I feel like when I talk to him, he has the moral authority over me. Well, yeah. Well, that doesn't make any sense. I do think he's the youngest person in the company. He's the youngest person in the company for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And to think that I insisted he work with Frank Saravalli as though I thought he was like 30. <laughs> well... He does go to bed at an age fitting of a 30 year old <laughs> drinks warm water. He already has his own house. He's only 24. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh shit. Yep. It's a good thing. Most of my new projects are AI related because the only thing smarter <laughs> than your M is a fucking computer. That's right. How does he know all that stuff? The thing about Tyler that I always find interesting is he just watches sports nonstop to the point where he knows a lot about sports. Like I can't consume that many. I don't have time. Things. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how he does it. But like everything he does revolves around sports in one way or another. Like he's on vacation right now with his girlfriend and they're gone golfing already two or three times. Four, Four years yeah. ago, he was 20. Yeah. Yeah. When I met him, he was 20. Well, he must've been 20 when I met him. Maybe he was 19. It's those goddamn gangly arms. He tricked me. <laughs> he sent an adorable handwritten letter to me once about wanting to do with more at Oilers Nation. He made me a little brick. Handwritten? Yeah. Yeah. He gave you the envelope like a note in class? Mm-hmm. He asked me if we could have a meeting at Little Brick. I complied, and he gave me a handwritten note about what he wanted to do. Now that I know that, so that thing that happened to your M check this year, remember, that gave him my respect at long last? Mm -hmm. Now knowing that he's younger than that person, mm. it's even more shocking. Mm -hmm. You can't kill Tyler your M check. I've changed my mind, Liam. Okay. I was just you have thinking to protect about it. Tyler well. your M check. But at least have a plan in place just in case. No, 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 no. no. Hold on. I protect him and then ride in his wake. You know what I'm saying? What do you think I've been doing for years? How Protecting. do you think I'm here? That is true. <laughs> you did get here from he that. Got me the job. He hired me at BTI. I remember, I remember walking in and I was like, who's this guy? That's Liam. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Damn, man. <sighs> This is just a day of shocks. Yep. Mm -hmm. A lot of shocks going on. See, if people don't come on the podcast, we all take a moment to live and learn. Yeah. We grow our perspective. If I was sitting here arguing with Jane Chalmers for 15 seconds of voice time, I never would have known. Never. That you're the head scout and your m 14. Are we legally allowed to employ somebody that <laughs> I young? I don't think so. I don't think so. I feel like he's been at the company for like six years. How long has he been here? Yeah, probably. probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. Doesn't that put him at 18 when he starts? Yeah. Yeah, he had just, I remember Gregor pitched him to me as like a young intern from TSN 1260. Gregor, that's when I first heard about him. He said, yeah. Gregor phoned me the first time in the history of phones and said, you have to work with this Tyler Yamchuk kid. He's never yeah. recommended anybody 
before or since. Yeah, that was the one. He wrote me a, yeah. So then I wrote to Tyler an email. Maybe we're just the boot script for Tyler Uramchuk's career. I feel like the boot script for everybody. Mm. This must be how somebody felt when the, something else happened. Do you mean our friends at Alpha Romeo of Edmonton when they signed a deal with the Real Life Podcast? Didn't think that thought through before I said it. <laughs> Check it out. Alpha Romeo Edmonton. That's the website. Go check them out. They've got a car for you that looks very, oh man, I want to go check out some of these. I want to test drive some of these. Jared is not in the office right now. He's our sales guy, but I need him to organize some we test drives. a DM from a real life listener who said, I won't lie. I always thought it was Alpha Romeo until you guys started saying Romeo on the show. If you walk in there and you say, I would like to purchase an Alpha Romeo, they will sell you a car. You could probably walk in there and say, I want to buy one of these here donkey carts. And if you have money, they'll sell you a donkey cart. That donkey cart, though, will be the finest donkey cart in all the land. I promise you. Where is your M truck's career going to go? He's probably, already at the top. He's probably going to be stacking Alfa Romeos at some point. Yeah. Maybe he already is. Who knows? That Maybe that's what he needed that house for. Stacking Alfa Romeos. He doesn't Romeos. need a house. He's only 24. Yeah, and was going to go in the house. Well, all of his kids. Well, he is working on that, yeah. Well, if you're this confident. And he's married. He's actually married. No, he's not married. Yeah, he got married in LA when they went down there a couple years ago. No wonder I think he's old. Yeah. I thought he did that in Vegas, not LA. Well, he did oh, that he, too. You know, they keep he got renewing married their vows. again. Yeah, they renew their vows a lot. No, they oh. don't. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> no. Halt. I remember now. We made fun of him for pretend married a whole bunch of times. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, dear listeners, don't allow these people to pull the wool over your eyes like they did mine. I'm trying. Tyler Ramchuk is not married. He is married. He's married to his career, married mm-hmm. to the game. Legally speaking, though, you move in with the missus, you're married. Oh, he's definitely common law. In the eyes of the law, he is married. Huge mistake. Yeah, he's got one less form to fill out. What you want to do, take this from me, Liam. Uh You get a van, (laughs) and you live in the driveway of the house. And you have her house? Her house, like with her parents. Yeah. And you just live in a van, like on Step by Step, you're Cody. Remember that show? Nobody? Okay. Uh, no, I do not remember. Okay, that show. that's perfect. I am. <laughs> if you Google step by step, Cody, you'll have a good laugh. It was a show that used to be on Friday nights when we were little. Damn, I'm in my wrong demo here. Sasha Mitchell. Yeah, Sasha Mitchell. And then he did some criminal act and they canceled the show. Oh, I think he no. killed somebody with a car or something. Yeah, you're not allowed to do that. No, no, no. But anyways, he was the sassy like weirdo that lived in a van on their driveway. Hmm. You could be that guy. I actually just started watching the OC. You guys ever? Oh, oh nice. it's like a time capsule. Probably yeah. there's no phones yeah. and computers. And it's shit. cool. It's so. Oh, I. Seth Cohen the, was a fashion icon. Mm-hmm. What's the guy's name? Benjamin McKenzie. Uh, ben McKenzie, I think the lead yeah, is yeah, called. Yeah, yeah, so I he just did a show called Gotham. You mm-hmm. guys seen that yeah, one? Yeah, 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 I watched Gotham. That was really good. Yep. And I didn't know he was in the OC, and now I'm seeing this young buck. It's, yep. uh, it's quite good. I'm only on episode. He's from three. the wrong side of the tracks, if I remember correctly. Yes, uh, he got in. A, he was stealing cars. Yeah, and then. Obviously, his lawyer took him in. To, yeah, um, of course. Yeah, and he Makes lives sense. in the pool house. Uh, yeah. See, uh, that's what you got to do in the OC. In the OC, then he yeah. starts dating Misha Barton. And everything comes oh, together. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm only on episode two. Oh my goodness! Uh, yeah, anything. I don't you're, know. You really started watching the OC. Into the OC. I'm fr- I also watched one episode of The Boys. On the boys Friday is so night. good. Yeah, I watched the first episode. Oh my god, I love that show. Uh, that was awesome. So I, I used to watch the OC one. so I could talk to girls. Yeah. This was my calling card as a come up. So you're currently in the middle of your childhood. I'll tell you this. <laughs> if you want to talk to gals, what you do is watch their shows and they inevitably go, Oh, you watch the OC. And then you can just sit there and shoot the shit. Yeah. I used to watch young and the restless. So I could talk to girls in the school bus. Were those girls like 65 year old men or ladies? Cause that's the only ones that I know that watch you. You're restless. wrong. You are wrong. Young, <laughs> I don't know. Like junior high, high school girls. They love soap operas. You're wrong. Uh, okay. You're wrong. I also used to watch Spanish novellas when I was in Hermosillo all the time so I could talk to gals there about it. Well, that makes sense. I actually didn't know The Younger The Restless was a real show. Still on the air. I thought it was just something from Friends for the longest time. Right. That's what the show is, right? The Younger and The Restless in Friends? I don't remember. I haven't watched oh. Friends since it was Hold on, on the air. What? You think Young and the Restless and Friends is the same show? Oh, no. The, they Joey do have. Joey yeah, yeah. plays uh, Drake Romano. Oh, you're yeah, yeah. right. The Young and the Restless. You're and right. I just thought... Right. It was just a fake show they nope. made up. And then I found out not that long ago that it's a real thing. Yeah, my mom still tapes it on VHS tape. My mom watches Coronation Street. Yes, we discussed that. Yes, that. Oh, right. It's very exciting. Yeah. I come on every now and then and yeah. we tell the same stories. 
Uh, yeah, so that's, that's my life. There you wow. go. Wow. Yeah. Coronation Street, though, is an interesting show because the script is for like people with middle onset dementia. It moves so slowly. You could be completely confused, come back to Coronation Street and like re anchor your sanity because the plot has advanced nuts in five consecutive years of shows. Mm-hmm. It's pretty repetitive. Recently, yeah. Uh, well, it's been on for fucking 50 years. What else are they going to do? <laughs> yeah, there's only so much that can happen on one street. But on this recent episode, or uh, storyline, <laughs> um, <laughs> someone was mad at their husband, so they drove <laughs> the car into a brick wall at full speed. The husband got out of the car, saved his wife, and then had a heart attack and died. And she survived. So I'm not quite sure that's how she drew it up exactly. But I think she tried to kill him, and that's how it's all gone down. Now she's trying to... They're not going to solve this shit till like, 2037. Yeah, they're going to get so and much mileage out of this. He was a lawyer. So, best lawyer on the street. So, how are they ever going to crack the case if they don't have the best they lawyer? They killed on? the best oh, lawyer on no. Coronation Street? Yeah. Imrad. That's the only way you get off that show, I imagine, is they kill you off? I, I think it is. Yeah, you have to die. That's People have been sweet. on that since day one. It's, I love, I love it. The queen loves Coronation Street. And like within the last three or four years, went and visited the set. And she was like as happy as you'll ever see her <laughs> visiting Coronation Street. I haven't seen that. That's funny. Oh, yeah. Love You're it. a big monarch guy, aren't you? Also, Liam? I love the queen. I love the queen, man. Yeah. Love the queen. Love the queen. Love the queen. I don't even know what I love well, about yeah, her. We're I so love, similar. I just love that she's around. The continuity, man. Yeah. I think that she's just a good symbol of hope i guess if my grandma loved that. the queen she had a tea towel in the front of her stove that was the prince charles diana wedding tea towel mm. she ordered it and you weren't allowed to use it that was for guests <laughs> and then she had a plate of prince charles and diana up on the shelf and we would look at it and she explained to me why we love the queen and she was a little white-haired lady too so i think of them as the same person <laughs> i think everyone in england just loves the queen yeah and then my so my girlfriend's mom is english and she has this whole cabinet of just the stuff on the queen. This is how I'm going to turn into an old British lady as I get older bag milk. I'm going to watch Coronation Street. I'm going to get myself some bunting as though it's always the Platinum Jubilee. (laughs) Sounds good to me. Plans for the future. I don't know anything about the monarchy. I apologize. Just watch The Crown. I've heard that show's good. It's very good. I've heard it's good too. I watched one episode. So here's a little funny story. Maybe it's not that funny, but (laughs) I... Uh, well, you sold me. <laughs> my girlfriend Andrea was over. And we were at my parents' house, and I I can't remember what we were all doing, but none of us were in the room. So I was, like, oh, just just put the TV on and like put something on. No, just hold on. Your girlfriend's British too. Half. How'd you find each other? Yeah, just, how you, you heard the accent and you were drawn together? No, she has no accent. social club. So so no, it wasn't at the social. I met her on Bumble. Ah, okay. yeah. So fair. Uh, her mom is English, but not like full, like she was born in Canada, but her parents are English. So when she met you, you were probably a very comforting accent that she was hoping to hear around the house. Her mom on me. You, because you remind no, sorry. her subliminally of her mom. Oh, yes. Her mom likes me a lot. And I like her a lot. She's a very nice lady. I see how it's all coming together. Yeah. So we were in, we would, I was like, yeah, just put something on them. I'll be back in a second. And I always feel like when you say, just put something on, like a sporting event, perhaps the news. And she just goes on Netflix and puts episode one of The Crown on. And this was so early in our relationship, nobody would tell her to turn it off. So we all just sat there and watched The Crown as a family and nobody said anything to each other. Just because you're English, so you gotta watch The Crown. Yeah, we watched The Crown where that's stereotypical. I feel like for English people, The Crown is the news. (laughs) Like it's just what's happened and they all are like, "Mm, yes, of course. I remember this. The news. Well, that is some wild shit. The Crown is very good, though. Even the new seasons are good with Diana. I have not that f- I didn't make it past the first episode. Do you just watch the first <laughs> episode of a show and then declare it over? One OC episode, that's all you yeah, need? Yeah, don't make it that far. I just don't have a, I don't have a lot of time it's on my fair. hands. I don't like shows either, for the most part. I like watching, like, 20-minute shows. Like, I love Ted Lasso, that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Because mm-hmm. I could just watch this. I could watch, like, six episodes today. And I would only have passed, like, an hour. This is why Quibi started. Remember Quibi early in the pandemic? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They were like, remember Quibi? No. Oh, it was like this whole new platform. Like you here and gone in a flash. Seven wow. minute shows. Wow. That's that was the really point. Quick. And they said, we're turning off Quibi because there's a pandemic and no one's going to want to watch stuff on their phone. Boy, were they right? Yep. But they had like one. mad ass celebrities on that show. They had all these little seven minute shows. The whole thing got canceled. Hmm. I've never heard of it. How long was it on for? 
Jeffrey Katzenberg did it with Meg Whitman. I'm surprised that it didn't work because they lost a billion dollars. There shows wow. like explained on Netflix mm-hmm. that are only 10, 15 minute episodes. Perfect. Mm-hmm. I feel like the pandemic would have made more people watch Quibi. Yeah. Just quick, digestible pieces of content. Yeah. I like that. Bald and bankrupt. That's love that YouTube guy. channel. We don't. We don't. He's been. I, I used to love that. He's guy. been revealed. He's a well, bit. I of haven't a, watched his stuff. Bit in of a while. scumbag. But he's an English dude that basically yeah. was out touring and he would in the film Ukraine. himself oh. and just post it on YouTube. But he was also very knowledgeable about mm-hmm. the places he was at. So you would like spoke Russian. Feel like you would learn something. Yeah, it was very weird. It was an English guy that spoke fluent Russian. Wow. Then when the war started, he had to leave. Now he's in Wales. It's so boring. Show me your lovelies. Show me your lovelies? Yeah. Is that boobs? I don't know. I just had a Welsh friend that used to always say that to me. To you? Yeah. Mm. Sounds like he's making a move. Yeah. It's from Swansea. Uh, I barely understand what he said. I have a friend from Michael Bolton. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's the head scout of the Sherwood Park Crusaders. <laughs> it's an amazing journey here. Really. Good for you. Thank you. Proud of you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. It's got a long way to go, hopefully. <laughs> You're doing pretty good, man. Shit. Yeah, for coming over in 12 years. Now you're a head scout. Come on. That's where we'll wrap it up because we've gone long today, Liam. Have we? I'll make your life easier today. 106. Yeah. We had nothing to Four talk about. Hour. And yet we have everything to talk about. But yeah. First, I got to tell you. I got to tell you about Oodle Noodle. 17 locations and counting available through our friends at DoorDash. If you're feeling lazy today, it's Monday. Who blame you for feeling lazy? Make one with your couch. Open up the DoorDash app. Fire away on a fresh box of nudes. Just that easy. Mm. Delicious. One more, di- one ding dong for the road, Liam. Ding dong. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's how we'll wrap up episode 397 of the Real Life Podcast. Just bag milk, Wanya and Liam shooting the shit because shooting no one else shit. can tell us not to. Talk to you on Thursday. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Real Life Podcast. Don't want to miss any of our nonsense? Hit the subscribe button and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram.